Hello everybody. I've decided to make a trilogy about um, three different experiences to do with lust. This one is part one. I hope you like it. When I was about 18 years old, I'm not going to tell you how long ago that was, you can guess, but um, when I was about 18 years old, I was living on my own in an apartment and my parents were living in a different country and wasn't very good at looking after myself, wasn't very good at taking care of money and um, as usual at the time I was broke. So I went out to try and fix my unemployment benefit. So I went into this building which I'd been putting off going into all the time and then found out that actually it wasn't there at all that I was supposed to be, it was a little bit further down the road. Between this building and on my way to the next building, this person stopped me and asked me, don't I know you? And I said, no, I don't think so, not that I know of. Yes, yes, aren't you a model? And I said, no, I don't think so. And he said, yes, no, um, or an actor. I, I think I've, I've seen something with you. This guy was speaking French, though. And um, so I said, yes, well, you know, I've been in a play. I had been in a play at the time, which a lot of people had seen, but it was in Flemish. And, nah, and everybody knows now where I'm from. Oh, well, never mind. And he said, uh, well, actually, I'm looking for somebody who's going to train me for a baptism. And, when I say baptism, I mean in something like we do in my country at the universities. When people first get enrolled, they do a terrible thing, where people, the new people, get kind of baptized by the old people. And it basically means they have to drink endless, unhealthy amounts of beer and do all kinds of challenges, like run naked through the city and steal flags and things like that. And of course, every year there are many accidents and many people die. But this was a bit strange, because this chap was a little bit old to be getting ready to be baptised at the university. He was at least, actually at the time, 20 years older than me. He said, yes, because I'm, I'm, looking, for, I'm looking for a master. He said, a master. He said, yes, a master, you know, you can tell me to do things, I lick your feet, I lick your shoes, uh, you can stay, you know, just with your bare top and keep your trousers on. And I said, ah, right, I get it. Basically, you're asking me to prostitute myself. He said, no, 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 don't call it prostitution. Um, it's more like a game. I said, no, it is, I mean, you mean I'll be your master and you'll be my slave. Yes, 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 exactly. So, well, actually, I did recently play a part, which was a bit like that. It's in the play, I'm also kind of very dominant person. So, uh, and I said, well, you know, let's... Um, just give me your card or your phone number and then we can do it another time. No, 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 it has to be now. And, um, I was kind of thinking about it because I'm somebody, for me, the most important thing in life is that it's interesting. And I was also interested in kind of doing a test and seeing in how far I could keep control. Basically, the things he'd asked for me didn't really have anything to do with sex. I mean, if somebody wants to lick my shoes and lick my feet, pay me for it, that's fine, anyway. And he sure said, oh, look, I'll show you my ID card, and um, I can give you 50 euros, it's all I can give you. I was completely broke at the time. But I figured this guy didn't seem to be particularly bright, he was like a head smaller than me, and he was big, fat, and chubby. So, I kind of switched over into my role, and now I'm going to use some language which I wouldn't ever normally use, but um, uh, to make the story authentic, I'm going to make an exception right now. So I turned to him and said, Okay, shut the fuck up! You're going to walk three meters behind me, let's go! So I started walking. It's about 20, 25 minutes. I walked to where my apartment was and to where I met him. And on the way, this man was like in a suit with a tie. Uh, he bumped into another man with a suit and a tie. He was kind of very embarrassed and red and shook his hand and kind of very briefly looked at him. And I was standing looking at him very angrily and then marched on. And then he quickly <laughs> hobbled along behind me. And um, when we approached my house, there was somebody who was about to ring my doorbell, a, a young friend. So I just told him, like, look. I'm, I'm busy, I've got to take care of some business. 
And uh, he kind of looked at oh, okay, and uh, we went off, and then we went upstairs. I uh, put myself down in a chair, lit up a cigarette, and said, strip. So he stripped. And, oh, he was also very worried, actually, when we came in. He said, oh, shouldn't you close the curtains? Are you worried that the neighbours will find out you're gay? I said, no, everybody knows I'm gay. And then I told him, okay, lick my shoes. You know, so I started licking my shoes, pretty disgusting anyway. And, um, oh yeah, and he was kind of rubbing his belly, he was going, oh, sexy, sexy, I'm pathetic, and blah, 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 and you're so wonderful, and I'm pathetic. And it was quite easy then to go, yeah, you're right, you're pathetic, and so on. And he'd asked me to do some kind of things before, like um, spit on him and hit him and urinate on him. Urinate on him I didn't do because I find that's kind of disgusting, so I would never do that. And the other things, well, you know, I would, they're completely against my nature. It's completely against my nature to hit someone. But um, since he'd actually requested this, I did. I mean, I just tapped him in the face, you know. And so then I told him he could take my shoes off and he licked my feet and then I told him he could take, I stood up and I said you could take my shirt off and he took my shirt off and I told him you can kiss me here and you can kiss me here and you can kiss me here. I think I, think I did take my trousers off, I just was in my underwear and then I allowed him kind of to kiss my testicles on different pieces. Then I went and sat on his back and rode him basically around my apartment smacking his bum. Um, I mean none of this really had anything for me to do with sex. What I should also mention, by the way, that this fat little chap was impotent as hell, so there was no kind of erection or anything, which of course made it even less to do with sex. It might have changed a little bit if he had. And you know, whenever he did something that I didn't say, right, you can do this now, if he did anything more, a bit less, I just slapped him in the face and spit on his face. And um, then the thing was, while all of this was going on, I had this very double feeling, you know, on the one hand I thought, okay, he's asked me to do this, he's even paying me to do this, I need the cash, it doesn't hurt me, it's interesting, I'm going to have a whale of time explaining the story to all my friends. But on the other hand, I also had this thing of why, what has this person done, and to who, that he wants to be humiliated in this way, you know, I just wanted to ask him, you know, what, what, what can I help you? Can you get over? You know, shall we talk about it? So we just have a cup of tea. Um, after riding him round the room, uh, well, I still tipped an ashtray over his head, which he was kind of upset about because this was his lunch break and he started to go to work afterwards. And then I ordered him to um, fill a bucket of water with warm water and get a flannel and basically just wash me all over. So he washed me all over. Um, he paid me already in advance, actually. But he said, oh, can we do this again? I said, well, you can leave me your details. And because he was saying, oh, yeah, I have a cellar at home, and when my wife is away, you could tie me up, and he whipped me, and so on, which was all a little bit too much for me anyway. But I said, okay, leave me your details, and, you know, we'll see. And um, that was that. I just kicked him out, that was that. And then I went over to see... Um, his friend, who actually lived just down the road, he was ringing my doorbell and told him about it and we had a good laugh and he said, yeah, I had a feeling about it. it was something like that. And this is actually a straight friend, but quite an attractive friend. And he said like, oh, oh and how much did you earn? Oh, oh, maybe next time, you know, we could do it together. Please stay tuned for part two and part three. If you don't want to miss them, subscribe. We'd also like to invite anybody who has similar kind of experiences to share them with me or to post them as a reaction. Um, thanks to all my subscribers and viewers. Thank you very much again um, to Boniac from the Reaper's Pit um, for promoting um, my video. Um, he's way more famous than me, but if you don't know his stuff yet, I think it's the very best on YouTube. So that's the Reaper's Pit. Check it out. Cheerio!